good time of the day, my fellow training creators. So today we're going to do something really, really interesting. I'm about to create a whole new technical training for a technical audience, meaning that those are going to be people that actually learn how to press the buttons and uh, their technical level varies from the very beginner people that only know some OSs or maybe even that not complete to full experts that would really like to brush on other skills. So this is going to be the type of training audience. The training itself, of course, is going to be a step-by-step uh, -step guide that was created based on my testing of the official documentation, which I have right here, just one of the sample products. And uh, using this documentation, the official documentation, we will actually convert it into a training with step-by-step -step guides and, and explanations and overviews of everything in regards to a specific environment. Now, the goal is to give as a generic experience as possible to the audience while maintaining all of the necessary skills to get the product uh, installed and configured end to end. So basically it means that cutting corners, for example, like pre-installing prerequisites or configuring operating systems in advance is not a really good option because that means that once the person goes out there in the field, tries to, to use this, those skills, they would not be able to, to perform it because there would be some step miss, steps missing. So it means that prerequisites need to be documented as well. And in some situations, of course, you cannot just win every time. In some situations, you will have to actually do it on several levels and you will need to do some of the prerequisites just because you don't have the, um, or the capacity to provide the training in a working state without doing those prerequisites. So for example, my uh, Windows hosts, they already have some Notepad++ installed and they already have the latest paid patches, at least until last year and stuff like that. So that was already done. Probably I would have to install the uh, unzip uh, product on my Linux hosts in order to unzip the product. So in, in order to prepare for this training, what I did so far, I created the machines out of templates. The templates was, were are just vanilla templates. Basically, when you install an OS and you just click next, 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 done, finish, and then it's up, that's the variation of the OS. Of course, I gave all of the IPs and everything because I need to provide a set of prepared machines. I don't want people to spend half of the week just trying to figure out the machines. Well, that would not be their job. If it would be their job, of course, one would include it, but their job is usually to get a machine from someone else and then do their stuff. The, meaning the software itself, the unique expertise that they're going to use. So I'm not really concerned with them knowing how to install an operating system, but I'm really concerned with them getting a very, very clean experience. Basically, an OS is stripped from all of the prerequisites, uh, all of the custom workings, so they would be able to find their way around when they get a, uh, an operating system from the customers. And it means that uh, we kind of start from the beginning. And my beginning point was, of course, creating those machines, giving them names for convenience, because I'm going to replicate it several times for, during the trade, meaning provisioning. And I gave the IP addresses and everything else just for them to work. Okay, so basically this is what you get. Uh, similar experience. So you know what? If you if you go to AWS and you select one of the machines pre-installed. Uh, and I mean, all of the AIMs pre-installed, you get one that already communicates with everything in your specific subnet, right? So that's what I created. And from this point on, uh, they are on their own. Another thing that I did, I actually installed, not installed, I copied all of the bits and they, those can be quite big bits. For example, let me show you, here's one, one and a half gigabytes, and that one is seven gigabytes. So I already copied the software to the target servers and I saved a snapshot of them with the software already copied. Why? Because uh, well, the environments are not super fast, but also, well, you know, if you are the one that delivers the training, not just writes, <laughs> you know, that people contact you and they say, you know what? Uh, I messed up. I want to start from scratch, right? So you go and what you do, you basically, 
it's very simple. You go, for example, this one, AOS, I go to snapshot, snapshot manager, and I'll select one of the snapshots that is relevant here. But I can also go right click it, click snapshot, revert to current snapshot, and that's about it. Uh, and from this point on, the person can continue. Now imagine yourself that the person would have to actually copy the software every time they mess up. And there are quite a lot of machines over here, not super dramatic uh, amount of machines, but still enough to fill the week with uh, lots of activities. And we don't want to spend everybody's time on watching the progress bar goes from left to right on very, very, very minimal tasks that do not provide any educational purpose. Okay, so this is the setup. Now, in terms of documentation, I got nothing. Okay, so... If I'll go to my documentation site, and I love online documentation because it allows me to fix it so fast, you'll see that basically uh, all I have is, uh, well, just the button, okay? Ops bridge, and the button even says the wrong version of, uh, of the product, so I'm going to modify it. Oh, that was a mistake. I'm going to modify it using Elementor because it was built using Elementor. Okay. And uh, yeah, so this is just the main page which links to all of my trainings. So basically, all, every, every, the only thing that I was done, and I did it incorrectly from the training perspective, uh, from the training material perspective, is creating this button which doesn't lead to any place comprehensible at the moment and i need to give it a correct version number because i messed that one up and what i have is zero so let's start with the beginning and now of course everybody have their notes and people have all their stuff somewhere but i like to give a really clear layout to my trainings before I actually begin building them. So I built my infrastructure, I saved all of the machine, my machines, I'm ready to write something. And uh, yeah, so, and, and this is a very good point for me to start actually something new, a new curriculum. So I'm going to give it a version because, well, that's the naming convention. Of course, everybody have their own naming conventions, all right? So it's going to be the name of the product suite. And in my case, it's not a single product. It's a suite of products and the version. And then I'm going to say, essentials training master page. Okay. So first of all, as you already noticed, this one is going to be a long, long training or at least long, long video. And uh, of course, I'm going to cover just the creation of the curriculum or the draft version of it, creation of one of the documents versus one of the uh, softwares that we're going to do. And that's about it. But even that can take some time. And essentially, this kind of training takes about one full week to write. To prepare, it takes a little bit more, but it takes at least one week to write. And I'm doing only a portion of it, and still it's just one week. So. That's it, I created the first document and we are going to start our journey right here, okay? So I need to give it a proper uh, a proper category and I'll give it a tag as well. As you can see, I'm using WordPress to create trainings and some may say that that's not the best way to do it. And uh, you know what? It depends. If you create tons of trainings every year, tons, I'm, I'm talking about like that, you're nonstop uh, creating new documentation, everything, of course, you need a different engine, something among those lines like this one. It sits on a very, very nice engine that provides versioning and whatnot. But if you want to create a very readable, easy to manage, easy to consume trainings, and they're all unique, uh, but still the amount of them is not overwhelming, there is no need to invest in costly agents, engines. This thing costs zero money. We just pay for the hosting, which also comes as part of our infrastructure anyways. And that's about it. And it's like the costs are minimal, the server sizes are minimal. So I, 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 I recommend it. I recommend it. All right. Now I'll find my folders here and it's going to be, going to be, what is going to be? Going to be OpsB, so it's alphabetical, I believe. 
So here we go, Ops Bridge Essentials. All right, and I'm going to publish the document already. Now, I'm not working with drafts, why? Because uh, the site is structured in a way that uh, if I don't link it somewhere like here, it doesn't appear anywhere unless, unless you really search for it. And because I have a dedicated community of consumers, uh, there is no risk of for me to expose something that I shouldn't. Basically, whatever I have, it's, it's welcome. So in terms of process, uh, for a release process, it's very, very convenient because I don't need to conceal stuff. I don't need to implement all kind of weird, invisible post kind of thing. And the reason I published it because now I can actually switch to Elementor, a visual blocks builder. And I like to use Elementor not for my documentation. Documentation is done in a classic editor, right? Uh, but Elementor is really, really great for master pages, for starting pages, right? So I already have the heading, though I don't need to provide anything else, but I'm going to put a text editor over here. All right, so that would be our welcome page. I'm not going to set the, set the tone already. If you know a bit about writing, you know, sometimes you just need to put a short version of the long thing that you're going to have later, but at least it sets the tone, it sends you some places. So I'm going to be welcome to the OpsB Essentials training. Training. Sorry, my fingers are a little, a little bit frozen. It's winter. I do have the AC going, but it's still, uh, it's just warming up. All right. Welcome to Essentials Obvious Essential Training. In, okay, I don't. I want to start from here. Um, uh, during uh, this lab week, uh, you will. Oh, come on. You will learn how to how to install and implement a basic workflow on every on major ops B components okay how to install integrate and implement a basic workflow on major ops B components Please start with the lab uh, setup page, uh, tab. It's going to be tab. Continue to the exercise tab. Tab. And that, that's about it, okay? So uh, I'm going to expand on it, of course. I'm going to create multiple tabs. One of them would be with all the infrastructure data. But at least, you know, I start, uh, I, it, it gives me an idea of this sort. I'm going to create a lab setup a portion, which might be very, very short. It might be an introduction to the lab. It doesn't need to be specifically technical. But then the exercises themselves is going to be a uh, very sequential thing. So I'm going to say, uh, make sure to uh, follow the exercises in the order they appear in the list okay since they're going to be integ integrations and there are some dependencies and some skills that people acquire as they progress i would like them to do it very very sequentially meaning for example if in some lab i teach them how to install certain packages on linux that i would expect to see in all other, other linuxes my training uh goal would be for though for them to use this skill in next exercises without me providing the same detail every single time okay so basically no single screenshot is going to be uh, recaptured and reposted in the exercises themselves this is not uh, the, the exercises are not going to be actually um Let's say help guides, right? In help, 
every single thing, for example, let's go to use, just, just to give an, an example of what I'm talking about. Every single point, every single uh, list, they include end-to-end -end procedure. Now, they go really deep, but they provide zero context. This is how help works. This is why you need the training guides, right? So, for example, whatever I'm doing, it, uh, it's, uh, this one is not going to be very, very like, exemplary because there are not many screenshots. But basically, they never refer to previous knowledge and it always starts from the beginning to the end. And uh, uh, let's see, maybe this one has an, an interface, right? Come on. Okay, tasks, UI element, as you see, just provides a simple description of every single thing on a page. And name as a UI element appears in every single UI element, but still it would be mentioned in a separate thing. So in training, what I like to do is to actually uh, not repeat myself on purpose while providing a very, very detailed guide about what is it that we're doing and why are we doing it. Uh, when when people encounter okay we are 16 minutes in and we still didn't create anything as i warned you this is going to be a long run so if you came to learn some ops bridge maybe this is not the right video for you to switch to others to other videos on my channel but if you're a trainer probably you are already hooked in on some context all right so the ne next thing is going to be tabs and uh, you know what yeah there we go so tabs gives us a little bit of uh, space here on the screen uh, for people to navigate between several sections without the need to scroll down you now as, a, as an experienced trainer <laughs> i can say that uh, students tend to miss Things. Okay, just go inside their mind and imagine yourself. You go to a lab week for an unfamiliar place. You're expected to do a million things, you're learning something new, new documentation style, new type of software. Everything is completely new. So, for example, in the past, when I was providing a list of all of the machines at the, at the bottom, bottom of the page, one page down below the uh, those tabs, many people would be missing them and they would be working without those details for two days two days until they stuck somewhere and they reach out and then i find that actually they lack all this information while being on the master page with all of the details that they need all right so in, at least on the page that looks like this i would try to avoid scroll down needs additional elements be below the fold as they say it in the um and a professional uh, jargon, right? So there are our tabs are going to be lab setup. All right, lab setup, fantastic. And uh, then the second tab would be uh, exercises. All right. Now I'm going to create a new uh, tab already. It's going to be hosts. Uh, okay, infra details. No, I'm going to say hosts and passwords. Hosts and passwords. Now, why did I change my opinion several times? The idea is I want it to be as clear as possible. Now, some people would say, well, you know, Alexei, why are you... Why are you addressing it like this? I mean, what, people are stupid or something? No, people are not stupid. They are in a new place. They lack the context and they are not familiar with our work. When they try our second or third or fifth training, they already know all of this stuff and they feel really comfortable. But I'm building a con content for people that meet me and my stuff, my content, my labs, my guides for the first time. All right. And what I want to provide to them is fully covered topics. I, I, I dive into individual Linux commands. And as you will see, probably in the guide that we're going to write in this specific session. OK, but uh, the idea is they need their questions answered before they would 
you know, be annoyed enough or they'll conjure enough, you know, will power to go and contact the instructors. Because every time you ask for help, for some people, it, mean, it means that you're it, it means that you're helpless and you don't want to look too stupid, which I completely understand. I'm one of those people. I don't like to look stupid, so I would spend hours investigating something that someone could solve, could have solved me for for me in like two minutes, right? So I would like to prevent this kind of situation for students. I would like to provide as much knowledge and everything that they need while uh, actually uh, giving some uh, for them some ways to to do, to do it uh, on their own right so i this tab i changed the name like three times because i want to get to the common knowledge okay someone that doesn't know how we refer to stuff doesn't know the jargon and they're looking for a password or hosts or something and i'm going to say no just hosts and passwords in this situation i don't want to tell them infra details they may click on it they might not i don't know what is the person going to be but at least if they're looking at least it's going to be easier for them this way all right so this page would include several things i'm going to add a table over here and the table is going to be solved it's going to be a uh, number, host name, IP address, and I'm counting the columns, as you see, as I progress. So host IP address, we're, are we going to have URLs? Uh, it's going to be URL, which doesn't exist. They would create the software that responds to URLs, but still. And then it's going to be application username and password, and then the machine username and password. So we got all of these columns. Let's create six by six. It doesn't really matter at this point. So it's going to be machine number. Okay. Next one is going to be host name. Come on. I, I promise I type much faster and clearer <laughs> normally. All right, host name. And now, as you see, uh, as a visual text editor, it doesn't really work. The layout is nice, the placing of those things, but I would like to spend as less time as possible in this kind of editor. So it's really good for kind of visual cues and clues on a screen. But now when I have a full table to provide, it's a little bit inconvenient. So don't mind this because the training itself, the exercises and labs, uh, setups are written in a normal post form, which is much more convenient for writing, verifying everything that you do. All right, so it's going to be IP address. Next tab is going to be URL. And I'm going to add post install. Okay, so they will know that the URL is going to be matching this parameter probably i'll remove this column later but i'm opening myself to those possibilities application credentials and i'm going to actually create a new thing over here and i'm gonna say um intended Okay, as you see, it's not really clear what I mean by that, which is completely fine because I'm going to refine it as I go. I'll get ideas, I'll see as the content progresses. And what, what I mean is that, you know, uh, people are going to install the software by themselves. So there are no application URLs or credentials. Okay, so here we go. I already uh, post install. I already, I already had this uh, terminology set over here. Now it's going to be post install, and that one is going to be post install with a small p. All right, and then it's going to be uh, it's going to be uh, host credentials. All right, so now we have four uh, we have several columns over here and we need to modify them a little bit so i want to make this one smaller as you see it's not very intuitive but still uh, we can manage 
Now the URL is going to be one of the longest ones. So application credentials, multi credentials. Okay, so this distribution, you know what? It's going to be just number, and I'm going to make it much smaller, like this. Okay, so that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four. And now I'll just increase by pressing tab, I'll just go down and I'll fill in all of those details. 8, 9, 10, alright, and so so on, probably 10 is going to be enough, so there we go, I have a placeholder, I actually can edit the table over here, but not all of its aspects, so we are going to do something called operations connector, alright, and since it's not the most important machine, I'll place it over here in the element, or let's say, pay, yeah, item number four i can change it later so it's going to be op six dot item dot com i'm doing it from my memory and now the ip address of op six uh, i don't have a clue so let's see op six it's the ip that we determined it to be it's going to be number two okay so it's going to be number two which means for me it's 172162392. Two. So people ask me all the time, like, say, why are you exposing those details to the internet? Well, because the details are not from the internet itself. There is no way for someone in the internet to access those machines. And if they are successful in doing so, well, good luck for them. <laughs> it's really hard to do because those, so those environments are not exposed to the external world. Okay, and those details are not really secret. All right. And of course, it's going to be root since it's uh, Linux and the passwords, I'll set them later, just not to expose some of the password policies, at least of my company. So that doesn't matter. Okay. So that's the intended use of hosts and passwords. Now we'll go to lab setup and I'm going to, to do this. Okay. I'm going to be intro, uh, introduction to the lab environment. Okay, and I made a type over here, which is completely fine. And then it's going to be how to use M remote and G. I'm going to be RTP SSH file transfer. Okay, so people that are new to the tools, they will. I'm actually providing them a guide about third-party tool that we use in order to connect to hosts. And uh, yeah, uh, we provide this on this level. I show them how I configured it, what is predetermined, so they'll know how to operate uh, all of those nice things over here. For example, if you want to transfer files, so file transfer, just uh, right, like this, right? So it's kind of two clicks away from accomplishing a file transfer capability between Windows and Linux hosts in our scenario. But I'll still, I still provide a separate guide for doing that. So I would not have to include it inside one of the exercises okay so how to use a remote ng and uh, i'm out of ideas for lab setup but i will add up some more now here okay i'm going to re-emphasize my last latest point over here why because some points need to be emphasized so i'm going to say please complete the exercises in the order that they appear in the list below okay and uh, of course cdf those are, those are going to be in the names of the product so installing cdf and then it's going to be installing obm installing apm installing obam Installing uh, op six. Where am I on number six right now, right? So I'm going to be installing AOS on Docker. Installing O agent. O agent. Uh, what did I miss? So basically, I'm going by the machines one by one. And okay, so we. I'm going to be OBA server. 
oba collector oba db vertica uh, vertica did i make a mistake yes all right so i'm setting up a full list of the uh, intended trainings okay and now when i see that i have too much what i'm going to do i'm going to say installations and everything below it is moving to the right side watch that boom there we go one a i everything is good all right installing all agent and now it's going to be integrations okay and we're going to do uh, basically coso that you don't need to know what i'm talking about but that's a general layout as you see i'm just going one by one and i'm just ending and okay and there's going to be obm op6 obm uh oba OBM APM okay and what else is going to be oh okay in installing you see anytime I remember something I just add it up I don't expect to make a full list of the things that we're going to do and then progress to something else this thing is moving and that allows me to progress forward even if I remember something or if I forget something Okay, so installing uh, site scope, installing operations or registration. Oh, all right, and now we're going to be OBM OO. As you see, everything is connected to the same product in this suite because that's the central product, but in general, there are, there are going to be some other. Ideas, right? It's going to be OBA. No, it's going to be APM, BPM. Oh, okay. Okay. APM server, BPM, Diac, uh, RAM. Okay. Let's see. I just expand. Okay. Integrations. Uh, Probably I need to go down a little bit in the list. So APM, BPM, APM, RAM, APM, Diag, uh, like this. APM Diagnostics, and probably I'm missing a couple of integrations, but that's that's good enough. Okay. So now when I have the list. Uh, in a perfect world, I would just go and create an empty document for each and every one of those guides. But I'm going to begin with just one for the sake of uh, our example over here. So I'm going to switch to my posts and I'm going to create a template post because stemming from it, everything else would be created, right? So I go to all my posts or all my documentation lists and I actually create a new document. This time is going to be uh, OPS B 2018-11 template, okay? Because from here I would be just copying stuff. And why do I need a template? Because it has some uh, categories and stuff like that, which I don't want to set up every single time right so i'll just do it once and now when i update and clone it would create a new document for me which is completely fine with me so there we go ops bridge essentials oh, fantastic so i'm going to publish and now i'll just uh, say update and duplicate all right so now i have a copy and i'm going to say installing op6 now i already uh, if i click publish it would replace the url with a new one so i can just plug it in uh, right now installing op6 and we'll link it and we'll say installing and it will just search 
installing OPSIX, it's already got my latest one. And I'm going to configure it, open new link in new tab. Okay. The whole reason I have this kind of documentation site is for people to use tabs. When they are not using tabs, they're not effective and uh, they just need to go back and forth between everything. So my uh, go-to is when they click on exercise, it would open a new tab. So there we go. So this is how I plug in all of my documentation over here, one by one. Of course, after I finish recording, I'll create all of those empty documents because I would like to have the ability to copy paste some stuff or create some formatting decisions and populate them to all of my existing documents when, when I have them. Of course, you lose the ability of creating a document by cloning, but uh, you know, I prefer to have all my documents set up in advance. And if, if I need to replace something, because there is just too much work to do in order to get it done, uh, I'll just delete the old document and clone something that I need. But usually, usually in my experience, it's better to have an empty document already. All right, so here we go. We have the installation oper installing operations connector. That's its professional name. And I already have the bits and I already have the environment set up. And I can actually go ahead and connect to it. All right. So as you see, everything that you see here right now is playing out on the same screen. Okay, so on the same screen. So I'm going to be clicking away lots of times. I'm going to be clicking on the documentation over here and writing the post and clicking on uh, the uh, environment itself, trying out some stuff and everything of this sort. In reality, I have three screens, sometimes four. And I'm using all of those screens in order to speed up the process pretty fast. So, for example, my RDP over here or my environment over here would have a dedicated screen of its own. It actually has it all the time. The only window that opens on this screen for me normally is, uh, is the environments. And I have a separate screen just for documentation and I have a separate screen just for writing documentation. And it speeds up the process pretty fast, but I cannot capture all three screens. So we would be clicking between them. But you need to understand once, once you have multiple screens and once you are very, uh, very familiar with the process, of creating documentation, it becomes super, super, super fast, all right? Super. So, and also uh, as a tool, uh, I'll, I'll show it right now. I'm using a uh, application called, what was its name? What was its name? I forgot its name. Sharex, okay? Sharex is configured for me to create screenshots on the fly and it manages your screenshots. And I believe I have a dedicated video just for that with all the configurations and benefits of this tool. But basically, if you ever use Snagit or OpenShot or stuff like that, ShareX is those things, but more. It's faster. It's embedded into your workflow like crazy. It creates GIFs if you need to create GIFs. It creates, it creates uh, images. Uh, let me show you, for example, I, when, when, every time I would take a screenshot, you would see that it's Control, Alt, and Z. And I would just select the region. It also has an auto select if I want to capture just a portion of it. Okay, and now I can, I actually have this kind of thing floating. I'm just, just at the top of my screen when I can select all these uh, nice features. But I, since I remember them all, I can actually click a hotkey and I can do. Uh, outlines, okay, and uh, paste them, rectangulars, and I can actually hide part of the things. It's a height light, but I can also can obscure, I believe. Is it obscure? No, no, it, uh, what was the name? Probably, probably, probably blur, yeah. It's a blur. So I can do all of those nice things in live using this tool. Okay, so let me bring it back. You've seen enough of it. So every time you see me create a nice screenshot, it's because I use this tool. And when I click enter, it goes into my clipboard. When I click, click escape, I get another opportunity. I just, I can go ahead and create the, uh, well, cancel the screenshot creation, right? And it does the same thing for GIFs. Okay, so I can record a GIF. Uh, 
the same way. I'm not going to create a video because it would collide with my video recording software that I use right now, but okay. And uh, yeah, now I can stop. And I actually have a GIF in my clipboard. Not really sure that it can go inside my documentation. No, it cannot. But if I will go to the ShareX itself, I can show you this. Okay. Oh, come on. There's the software. There's our little GIF. Okay, and of course I I can right click it and I can say copy uh, copy image and when I paste it into my documentation there it is there it is as you can see now I'm not sure that it would actually show it as a as a GIF because there is a limit to what you can copy and paste all right but still it's good enough. Right, so this is my software that I'm using here in the background. A little bit of an insight into how I create the documentation really fast. So now we are ready. Okay, let me close my image managing software. I done bragging. And yeah, empty page. I have the official documentation already opened over here. And I have the machine. All right, but I skipped a step, which I need to document. Okay, so let me start from the beginning. Uh, Opsix can be installed on Windows and Linux hosts. Now, if I if I would not know this kind of an information, okay, uh, I I would actually read the docu the documentation. From scratch, learn, take my cues and clues, and write here on the little clipboard everything that I need to know about the software. Okay, as a as a as a profession, I actually learn this kind of stuff, and then I provide the training on it. But since I already did this in the past, I already know what I'm talking about, right? So here I would be just creating kind, some kind of an entry, and we know Linux host. We are going to use the Linux. Uh, version because it is faster and easier to operate from OPSB perspective. All right. All of uh, no no shift enter here. All of uh, the op six bits were all ready transferred to your uh, target server. Okay, I'm going to edit it a little bit later. Okay, step number one. What is step number one? Okay, my lab guide would actually teach people how to use M Remote NG. So once they start their labs, the initial situation would be they have two applications open. One of them is Chrome. And the second one is M Remote NG. That's it. That's it. They're not connected to any place. So step number one is going to be going to be uh, connecting to the operations connector. Okay. So let's start from a very fresh. We are going to do step number one: connect to operations connector. Now, since they already learned how to use it, I'm not going to teach them how to use M Remote NG. But I'm going to show them a, uh, an example of what I mean when I say about that. Now, I'm trying to use as little space as possible for my screenshot. So if I can make them small, I'll, I'll make them small. There is some uh, logic to making full screen screenshots, but they're really hard to publish. And they make people a little bit, uh, I would say, uncomfortable with what you need. Because every time you create a full page screenshot, you can actually need to create arrows that point at with what you meant. Because they need to scan the whole screen before they understand what you're talking about in your screenshot. Okay, so if if you have enough space for people to understand what you're talking about, and uh, you can you can do it only with a portion of the captured screen. 
do it. Okay, so what I need them to see is the OPSECs, and uh, I'm going to actually create boxes over here to highlight what I mean, and that's about it. Okay, this is going to be my screenshot. Now I have a screenshot for every single step. If I if it if it's a visually comprehensible or visually if it has a visual component to every step, I will do it. Why? Because people are not familiar with this stuff, and for them it's going to be easier to find and re-verify on the screen. People call it spoon feeding. I call it a proof that I actually did the step and tested it during uh, the exercise creation rather than just throwing people out in the water using some kind of logic because I read the document, okay? So it means that I, whatever I'm documenting, I tried it myself and it's part of, of, uh, of what I create, okay? So it's going to be uh, connect to the op six host via SSH. Okay, list the uh, directory contents by default. By the way, you see that every, every instruction that I create is actually, it has a verb as one of the first words. I, I try to use it as a first word, and if I need to create and to add an explanation, usually it would be a follow-up, or it would be a line below. Okay, by default, you will land in the slash root uh, directory. This is where the op six bits are copied. All right. Okay, and uh, what I created here is a little bit of a mess because I have an explanation, but I also have a step. This is the directory by executing the command below. Below. Okay. Now. I'm telling my user that goes into this exercise for the first time that I'm actually going to provide the command below. What it means uh, from our perspective, I want to teach them that every time I give a verb of clicking something or connecting or running a command, uh, I actually I actually provide the command below the line. So I would not have to repeat this thing for every command, just a couple of first ones, and then they would learn how to read my documentation and the instructions but i cannot expect people to understand that actually the code that i'm going to use over here and i'm using insert code module okay i'm going to say oh, that's minus l for example okay and it has a little bit of a spammy part to it because of the browser that i'm using but basically uh, just to give you an example I have a plugin that allows me to embed a code this way, which, which shows them kind of what would be on the screen simultaneously, provide, and simultaneously providing them with the ability to actually copy paste uh, the instructions themselves. So in this specific instance, I'm going to show them that this is the command and uh, this, those are the bits, okay? And there we go, we go to edit post and I'm going to create a screenshot. Usually when I provide a comment, I would not provide a screenshot as well, but here I'm kind of teaching people, I'm easing them into the document itself. The idea is not to repeat myself, but, to, but for the things that I did mention, provide a really in-depth explanation or, a, or an intuitive example of what is it that people are going to expect to see. And this allows them to progress really fast with the documentation. And believe me, there are, there are going to be thousands of steps during this whole week which we, in which they were learning the products. So very, very important. Okay, cool, fantastic. And those are the bits. Okay, uh, they, 
And now I, I see that it says operations connector, but I say op6. So I'm going to be uh, op6 stands for operations connector. Now, as you see, I have kind of a style guide, right? I repeat some of these things. Uh, for example, for specific for concepts, I put them in the quotes. And uh, for concepts that are part of our speech, well, let's say this kind of abbreviation, it's I'm not going to use it as uh, in, in brackets. Okay, so I need people to distinguish between what I mean as like concepts or out of the or a reference material and what I mean by actually a, a normal thing that they're doing. Okay, uh, right now there are not too many examples of that, but we're going to ease into them later in this document. Okay, so it stands for operations connector, but it's also known as OBC uh, BSM connector. You see, I'm separating the speech or but it also known known no it okay. also known as obc bsm connector uh ops b uh ops b connector and in con text just as connector okay in this lab week we are going to refer to it as op6 in all no yeah, no is op6. Keep it short, not weak, and it needs to be hyphen. All right, cool. So as you see, as I develop the documentation, I actually go back and forth and I add parts, and that kind of serves a purpose, okay? Um, I'm zipping the installation. Uh, the op6 is zipped and since we are using uh, the Linux with no pre-installed prerequisites, we need to install the relevant the relevant software. Now, I, I am a sinner, I must say, uh, because, uh, you know, they say, don't edit while you write, and I'm trying to comply. <laughs> uh, uh, but, oh, man, so still, I'm trying to fix some mistakes on the, uh, while I'm typing, but uh, actually, I need to let them be because I'm trying to do as, as much fast work as possible. But... Ah, yes, you see, it doesn't really pay off, but I, 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 I try to contain myself. So, so the unzip. Okay, so it's to be with a small i. Install the unzip packages, and I'm going to get some code, and it's going to be yum install unzip minus y. Okay, if we do an insert, ah, oh, it still does that. Okay, I have a little bit of a bug over here. Okay, and once it's installed, and I do. Okay, what once the zip package? Uh, package installation is finished. Okay, 
unzip the connector uh, unzip the optics right. once the installation is finished so now we are going to do just that okay so yum install unzip minus y and we'll see if I made a mistake in my setup or not. Probably not. All right. And there we go. It scans the internet and it installs, it installs the bits. And there's the installation. Okay. Now, I'm not going to screenshot that. Why? Because I expect people to run a command and, uh, and uh, they expect something on the screen. I already did that here. When I preview the changes, okay? And since there is no verification step of verify that the software is installed, okay? Now they know when I see this, they can actually copy it from here. So I don't need to provide them another screenshot. Uh, sometimes they need to verify that the installation is successful, not in this case, okay? And, uh, I, and then I would include it as a, uh, as a step, as an as a additional step. You know what? Let me show an example of that. So I can go over here, okay? And I can say here, rectangle, okay, and then arrow. And I can and I can go and say uh, you know what you know what uh, um, make sure that the packages were installed successfully, All right? And there's the screenshot. All right, remove. And that's going to be. Uh, our way to to confirm that the operation was successful but is uh, when i look at this kind of thing and it's a really small package which always works the only time it wouldn't work for example it's when you don't have the access to the internet uh, it's not a step that i would normally include in this kind of a small operation because there is no value in it it doesn't educate people about anything and since it's going to be one of the documents down the line okay number e and they're going to do something in the lab setup as well i'm not going to go in the middle of the training curriculum on day three of their training or something and teach them to verify how the installed package is working so i always i need to keep the context in my mind so it means that while I might have this kind of step from time to time, and you were wondering why I did not include it, I choose not to, okay? Not because I don't need it every single time or I'm trying to cut some corners, but because my experience and my understanding of the training curriculum says that uh, this would not be necessary, okay? If someone stumbles upon this document by mistake or as a reference later, they would already be familiar with our documentation. Nobody gets here by mistake. And if this is a new guy that turns for the first time, the essentials training right here, he's not going to meet this command, the installation command for the first time turning down the line, okay? So I'm just doing the introduction to commands and the way that uh, what, what I'm expecting them to do on a screen just once per document, that's about it. If this would be the very first exercise of the whole curriculum, for example, somewhere here in the installing, there I would include the verifications. In this document, in this document, I'm actually going to include them. All right. So context matters. Context matters. Okay. Unzip the OPSIX archive once the package installation is finished, and it's going to have a command of its own. And this time I'm going to say, let's say clear. Okay, and uh, let me list it once more, and I'm going to say unzip. Uh, and then I'm going to say operations connector minus D op 6. Uh, yep. And there we go. When unzip is a very nice command, it creates a directory of its own. Okay, so. Uh, 
there we go, it, it unzips, so I verify while I'm writing, I'm also verifying that I, what I mean is actually what I need. So let me type, take this command and I'll just uh, copy it and delete it from the line because I don't need it any longer. And I'm going to copy paste it over here. Now don't mind the weird things that happens here with this span, it's just a bug in my uh, plugin. Probably I caused it, so yeah. No disregard. And this option actual pipeline is uh, once the package installation is finished. Uh, we will use the minus D option to uh, unzip it into a dedicated directory. Okay? So now they understand what this part means. They, they probably can guess what unzip means, they just installed that, the, the, the software, but they don't know what I meant by that. They understand this bit, understand this bit, this is new, and I address it, okay? They wouldn't have questions like, oh, okay, well, yeah, you know what you say, it's really easy, but then uh, I, I had to make a bunch of things in order to make it work, so uh, I don't know what you're teaching me, like, well, what am I supposed to learn from that? Where's my context? So I would provide context for most of those flags or tabs unless they're given and there is no way of using software without them. Uh, for example, when we do a dedicated software installation like uh, the ones that we're creating right now. So context matters, okay? So we stopped enough on that. I can talk about it forever, but I just want to run with the whole operation and once we cover those topics, it's going to be much, much, much easier. Okay. So I'm going to be, uh, say, I'm going to say, this is the directory again. This is the terminology. List, yeah, this is the directory contents again to see that the, to see the result. Okay. Now I would give them a command like here for a second time, but I'm not going to. I want them to type it by themselves. So I'm going to be do an S minus L because this is what I taught them, but yeah, but that's enough. And I'm going to put a rectangle on it. Now, some people would ask why aren't I using a different color or highlighter? And I just, I like them better. There is no specific rule about this the only rule is to be consistent okay once people see your screenshot with this kind of element and they know that this is the part that you need to pay attention to they would be looking for it so don't deviate doesn't matter what you do but just don't deviate be predictable all right okay uh navigate into all right we are done with the unzipping so i'm going back a line and I'm going to say navigate to oh come on that was a mistake no navigate and I'm going to put a space here just to make it a little bit prettier all right okay navigate into the newly created directory and it's going to be the command is going to be cd op6 okay and here i made a mistake because linux is sensitive to uh, Linux is sensitive to, to this kind of thing. Okay, right. Now we see that I'm deleting all those empty lines, uh, but that's, uh, yeah, I'm just uh, not dealing with the uh, plugin properly, but I, I need to do, I need to address it a little bit better. Okay, cool. So, list the, List the content. Yeah. 
All right. So I'm going to go CD op six, and I'm going to list. And now, since I'm using a different command, uh, copy, uh, I'm going to provide some context. Uh, this, 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 this. I'm going to say like this. Note. Uh, no, I'm going to say pro tip. We used uh, ls minus l before. Um, but the same result can be achieved by uh, typing ll. And since it looks really weird in all fonts, uh, uh, in small l, letter l. Okay, because uh, you know when I see the command for the first time, I would be inclined to type ii with capitals or what what not. You, you never know what's going to happen. So uh, just you know, giving some context. Now you say, well, Alexei, you know, uh, people that come to your boot camps uh, on come to your lab weeks, they kind of they should know their stuff, right? Those should be admins with experience, which learn a new, very advanced software. And I say yes, <laughs> but sometimes no, okay? Just sometimes, all right? And uh, I say, you know what? If I can teach you Linux while I'm doing, that is the basics of Linux while I'm providing you some content, but at least it's going to be easy because sometimes you meet those people and they're really defensive, uh, which is, uh, I, I understand where they're coming from. I don't understand how they got the job, uh, but probably they have other qualities. And uh, on this one, they just need to learn. They just need to learn some more stuff. So I'm providing it gladly. It's okay. I'm completely fine with them. All right. This is the contents again. And uh, yeah, I'm going to write a screenshot over here. And by mistake, just by mistake, I'm going to include the CD op6 as well, which is the previous uh, command screenshot. Okay. All right. List uh, directory again. Very need to be very consistent about the documentation uh, or the terminology. Okay, this is not an overview video. This is like actually doing the thing, right? Just doing the thing. This is the directory again. It should list all of the installation bits for OPSIX. Now, there is a thing with, uh, with this particular software and it had two components to it. And when you were installing the software, it was kind of uh, installing everything in one go, but then they separated into two bits. So I might need to go back in documentation and actually add the missing bits. I just need to verify. So I'm going to uh, list the, the, the directory. And we do have the OA over here. So uh, I might not be needing to add the other portion, but I might need to. So now we're going to test it. All right. So. I'm going to say installing the optics, and I'm going to to provide some context. Um, optics installation has a uh, Java-based GUI. Uh, but since our Linux, uh, Linux uh, VM does not have uh, the GUIC abilities, we will need to install it in text console. 
mode. Okay, so here I'm creating something interesting. First of all, I'm sharing information. So people know, okay, you know what? I might have a different experience by installing the software in different places. First of all, it has a GUI, which we're not going to use. And then the second thing, since it's going to be intended for new users, uh, so uh, it's actually to be in parentheses over here. Okay, I'm going to say we're going to enter the in text mode, which is like a uh, human terminology for what you're going, what they're going to see. But I also refer to it in, as console. So now they have like a terminology embedded into them. Okay, we're building, I'm building their vocabulary that would allow them to communicate about those products with other people that are already familiar with them or with me, and uh, we will just share this knowledge between us. So it's an easy way. I'm not going to say uh the uh, installation without the GUI is called console like uh, is a no random fact card <laughs> that I'm about to just pull out of my sleeve right no I'm not going to do that what I'm going to do is just provide them some kind of a context over here and while they're at it I just expect them to actually learn something while they're at it okay education very very important we are here to teach. All right. Okay. So that's that. Uh, so what I'm interested in, um, I'm going to say list the installation options for op six. And I'm going to say, uh, uh, yeah, and I'm going to say to them this uh, install. And then it's going to be uh, like this. Yeah. Okay. So that's going to be the command. Let me remember it. Let me copy the command. Right click. And I'm going to say, by the way, as you see, we did not refer to this document, but basically it has like a live version of the step-by-step -step guide, which is very hard to read. It's very old, stylish, and I'm just consolidating many of the steps over here. And if you think that I'm just having an overkill and I'm providing too much information, then you just didn't read this document. <laughs> You shouldn't be the one to do it, but yeah, there's like a lot of stuff that goes into here. And uh, remember when we said that there is not too much context in the documentation, sometimes there's just too much. Operations connector captures and forwards data transfer is controlled by policies, but I'm providing a training and my training is based on some webinars that people already took, so I don't need to provide that kind of context. So sometimes there's just an overkill, sometimes the goal is not clear with the documentation, which, which is completely fine. Everybody are doing their own, but I'm as a content provider need to provide a consistent product. So this is what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, by uh, executing the installer, installer with a uh, slash question mark. Yeah. All right. And uh, there we go. So this was what was was missing the control yeah. control V. Uh, I need to switch browsers. This is just so lazy. Okay, and that's not what I meant. All right. And the result execute the installation. Okay, so, we are, so here is going to be interesting. I'm going to say examine the result. Uh, the console, console installation is performed with the uh, minus console. Done. 
uh, all right or flag let's say more flag yeah right so we are going back to our software over here okay and it says well incorrect argument but it also says okay console now there are other options but i'm not going to expand on them this is not a help file this is a cookbook or a guide to get something done okay so unlike the official documentation which lists every single item and every single flag ideally we are consolidating this into an actionable form so this is very very different um, console mode okay and this probably needs to be capitalized and now I'm uh, going to uh, okay sorry and install a search yes insert and I'm going to say console Let's see. start the installation in the console mode take the read scrap okay and yep that's the comment uh, the installation wizard there we go no the installation wizard there we go okay so let's execute the command Oh, come on. Okay, starting the installation, and there we go. So this bit, at some situation, was working or not working. And then we see that there is a bit missing. Okay. And actually, it fails on this. Okay, and IPv6, IPv4, address is configured, and address is not configured. So we are missing a couple of things over here that we need to do in order for make it in order to make it successful. Okay, but basically it fails on this bit alone. Okay, recommendations are fine, but this bit is the most important one. So they are they need to install the bit. So we are going to say we are going to say something like this. Mm. Check the result. The, ins the installation fails due to a missing package. Uh, all right so right now they would need to install a missing package so we are teaching something we're teaching a failure how to read it okay and how to fix the problem now normal people would uh, actually address the prerequisites uh, initially and I, I knew that this package is missing during the agent installation. I was not sure the agent would try to install it itself in the same command as installing the op6. So that was my little test. However, the M4 package, they need to install it. And in my documentation, I include the errors and solutions to them. And uh, because if they are part of the design, nobody or nothing warns you. Okay, you get the software bits and you know in Windows, what do you do when you get the software bits? You just double click them and let it go. Sometimes in professional software, it would require you to install some other parts. So it would notify you that something is missing or anything like this. But sometimes it would just go to the very end of it and it would fail, which is, it happens, okay? So here it started at the beginning and now we show how to fix it. And they'll use this knowledge because down the curriculum, there is a, an item named installing agent. And 
it would be done on a completely different machine and there they would have to install the missing parts and they already know what we're talking about okay so i'm always including the errors because if they are going to meet them definitely then definitely i'm going to include them okay there are some errors that are caused by example by configuring something uh, in the wrong way let's say i installed the wrong package in the os while, while i was preparing it i cannot prepare the user for this kind of experience because it's going to be different on every single environment but if the software installation process itself includes this kind of error it just it's it's a part of it people are going to see it every single time i going to show them i going to show them the symptom and the way to analyze it and then the solution okay so down the line in case you'll see the this guide continues into other products you'll see that uh, in other videos i would be still including this kind of thing all right so we have a failing result fantastic and i'm going to show them okay so this is where it began this is where it goes and i'm going to show them that this one is failing okay and probably now it's time for me to add some uh, creative oh no 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 a load image from clipboard and i'm going to uh, add an effect where is where are the effects 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 edit no 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 where is the effect come on I know. edit send the back image insert go down left down left add, add image effects all right it's going to be torn edge and i'm going to say torn edge but depth range and i'm going to say this one is not and not okay so this is an indi indication to the user that the image continues somewhere below it right i'm just using a portion of it to show them what i mean okay so i use this effect a lot when i'm actually providing just a portion of what they need to see but i would just like to address this bit okay and not always sometimes it's not necessary but in this situation i feel that it's uh, it's going to be required okay so now we're going to say install not install <laughs> install the missing package um in the ops b in uh, in many many cases ops b will provide you with the names names of the missing prerequisites with the names of the prerequisites in the error messages okay and the installation command would be going to be a yum install m4 minus y copy that insert this annoys me i need to fix it at some point all right let's give it a try so there we go yum install an m4 and y and there we go there we go now you might notice something in my documentation everything is a step everything is a number no loose ends okay no loose ends so the idea is uh the idea is that people can go point by point they never need to they never need to guess where is it that they are right now let's say they need to stop close and switch to machine to another machine close their laptop do some work go back to the to the thing that they did 
and they can actually go and refer to the list of steps and find them okay so this is very 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 important for me it's called an army style i believe and i'm using it everywhere and i'm actually as a person that is responsible for style style guiding for my team that's a demand that i put on everybody everything is a number everything has a screenshot or visual proof if it can be provided if you have it people should see it first okay and now we're gonna say just uh, re uh, rerun the installation again okay and i'm going to take this thing and i'm going to copy it i guess i can copy can i no okay let's embed it okay insert there we go it worked and now it would work with a uh, okay now it would work we go back to our thing over here we rerun the latest command and now There we go. Requirements passed, recommendations failed. We don't care about recommendations. They serve a completely different purpose. All right. So, 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 it, there it goes. It continues. I can actually create a GIF out of it, uh, but uh, what, what would be the point? Documentation. I mean, it's pretty cool, but I need to upload the file instead of just pasting it into the, the editor. So it's not going to be useful. Okay, so the installation wizard. Mm, uh, the installation will begin with the old agent part. Once it's done, you will be to end user license agreement uh, to the to EU EULA, EULA part of the installation. Okay, switch to the EULA part of the installation. Cool. Um, so there we go, and there it begins to do something with the agent. It starts to install, to start it, and we're just waiting. This is the part of the documentation writing where you're just waiting. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna hit the pause button on the video recording. All right, and we are back with the magic of editing in like two seconds for you, but uh, quite a uh, couple of minutes for me. So the first thing is choose locale, and we're gonna say just that choose locale is going to be English, okay? Fantastic. So let's go through it real fast, okay? Uh, choose the English uh, locale. Boom. Okay, bye. Typing to and, and press in enter. Yes, I do go into this kind of detail, but only once. Okay, why? Because you never know. You never know. Okay, and then. Okay. And now I'm going to specify that press enter uh, when prompted. This will this will occur several times until until the end of the installation. Okay, there's our example. So I hit enter and now I covered all of the next steps as well because they are repetitive. Okay, so if it would be a uh, Windows based installation or GUI based installation, that would be next, 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 next finish, right? But 
uh, I would just write one line for them because there is no educational value in addressing every single one of those enters. Okay. Uh, it's going to be Y, yes. Uh, on the Y and okay, it's going to be hit Y and enter on the Y. On the yes no uh, prompt. Oh come on, prompt. All right, and I'm gonna copy it, and I'm going to say here yes and enter. All right. And now I continue hitting enters until I get to the very end of it, but I don't need to document it anymore because those are repetitive and we address them separately in a separate paragraph. So now I can be a little bit lazy in my writing. Okay? Sometimes I go very deep into the details, but if there are there is no educational value or if there is something that you already addressed. There is no need to repeat it. Now, on the official documentation, though, you would see something different in time. Okay, so I guess there should be... Uh, okay, you see that one? They addressed yes, next, next, install, and so just every single button in a different uh, point. And they do provide a screenshot, but those I don't value screenshots of this kind too much because when the screenshots matter suddenly they disappear in the official documentations of every single software that I ever met so I'm not giving them any credit for that all right and now we're gonna say that the installation is done because it is done okay uh, When you see the result similar to the screenshot below, the installation is done. Okay, done. And probably I needed to address the result, so I'm going to edit it. As you see, it's super fast with this tool. It's just amazing. I'm just going to just go back, and I'm going to say, uh, yep, that's my, yep. As you see, I, I edit while I capture the screenshot, but I also, I also edit while I, uh, I edit while I, uh, well, after the screenshot capture itself. So. We're going to say uh, congratulations, uh, the install uh, exercise is complete. We, uh, we, you see the op6 part again in, in the integration section. Okay, now I don't want to tell them go to the integration section. Why? Because they would go from here to here, then it, it would contradict my whole wording of complete exercises in the order. Okay, now logically, in this kind of a small product, small component, it would be logical to progress into the integration part immediately. However, at this time I split it because uh, when I address several aspects of the uh, documentation or uh, reconfigurations or anything in my uh, later on there is a big chance that i would need to address only the integration part and not the installation for some people so i'm splitting the document into or the process of installation and integration into two different bits just for that just for the convenience because sometimes the a document can become a reference material and I don't like to go and point people to okay go through this URL and start from step 15 that's where where that's where you are because if the document includes two different separate processes 
I will separate them. This is the beauty of online documentation. In Word, for example, if I would be providing my training in Word, MS Word or something, I would definitely have to go and do it in the same place, okay? Because jumping between sections is a nightmare over there. But here, it's actually a benefit of having two different separate uh, topics uh, covered in two different documents. And I'm going to utilize it as much as I can. So this kind of concludes our first document creation. It took one and a half hours with explanations, but in reality, this kind of document takes about 10 minutes, including all of the steps that we did. Okay, and it's done in silence without talking too much. And once you write a document of two of this kind, as you see, there is not too much to it. The whole document creation process is very, very easy. Okay, and now I can go back and forth and try to see if what kind of mistakes I had, uh, what typos my uh, embedded um, and software has found. This is what what it's called Grammarly. I really really like it. Okay, so executing installer. As you see, it just highlights everything. Same as Word, but better. I actually have it for Word and Outlook as well because you know when you answer tons of email emails a day, uh, you just you can just take the spelling part for, out of your uh, more code, right? So I I I, I like utilities. So there we have it. This is a complete document. As you see from style perspective, it's super super clean and easy. And introduction at the beginning, and then we just dive into steps. Every action, every verb, is actually a uh, a bullet point, all right, or a numbered list of its own. I don't like bullets because they are not numbered. And everything that can be proven visually, I, I provide the visual proof to that. Of course, maintaining this kind of documentation is not that uh, convenient in case you no know, versions change or stuff like that. But it also proves to the student that what they see is what they get and they don't need to second guess every single step. They learn to trust the documentation and it allows me to provide more content every for the same time, right? So they have 40 hours to learn stuff. There would be more content in it just because we learn and we communicate with each other uh, this way, okay? I provide a consistent result. I provide a consistent documentation. And while I spend maybe a little bit more time on creating it, I'm actually saving a lot of time on supporting it later. So this is not an extra effort for me. Okay, some portions, portions which I can just branch out into hierarchy, for example, preview changes. And you'll see that I actually have a point that uh, says, well, you know what, installing OPSIX and then the under steps, and then I go out of it, installation wizard, subsections and sections. It's also very important because it allows people to navigate a little bit better. And I tend to use those, but not more than four levels. Although some people say not more than uh, two, but uh, those, standards start, so those standards are hard to meet, but that's completely fine. So this is the complete document. I hope it kind of uh, sets you to a specific direction with your documentation writing, even if you survive till the very end. Thank you for that. So if you survive to the very end, just subscribe to the channel for more content of this kind. And I'll see you in the next one.